All right, everyone. The refill studio is back. Um, let's refill to 99. This set will begin, and we for this episode we have our special guest Koss uh, joining us for uh, this episode. So Koss, um, notable achievements he has. He has a uh, third place in the How to Spend a Special Day um, event, as well as multiple top tens in uh, The Widest Day, Devotely Towards My Dream, and ReZero. Koss, uh, welcome to the Refill Studio. It's glad to have you here. Hello, hello. Glad to be invited to this uh, studio. Well, Koss, what other things? I already gave you a pretty uh, good intro, but is there anything else you want to add about your uh, introduction to uh, tell to your uh, fellow viewers here? Um, I guess I could start off with uh, when I joined. So I officially joined in 2019 during the first anniversary event. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it just, you know, I just started playing more often. And then I decided to check the Reddit. And then here I am in the Discord. And then I just all started from there. Okay. How did you, you, you got into the game in 2019, but, but how did you get into to Bandari? What, what sort of uh, started that spark? Oh, um, so pretty much I saw an ad, and then I'm like, huh. And then I saw the uh, Yukina, the first anniversary Yukina art, and I'm mm. like, wow, that's really pretty. So then I just decided to, you know, reroll my accounts until I got one. Mm. Did you did you uh, have any experience with the previous like rhythm gacha games or, or anything, or was it just like you just saw Bandrei randomly? You're like, yes, this is for me. Like I I'm playing this. Um, not in the mobile industry, but I have played like OC Mania and unfortunately Roblox uh, <laughs> Robeats as part of my <laughs> rhythm games. Nice. And, yeah. 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 That's that's good. That's good. Um. So, so you you mentioned Yukina, um, sort of was sort of your first impression into to getting into to Bandari, but um, is she considered your your favorite character still, or is it a different favorite character? Uh, Kos, why don't you share a bit of your about your your favorite character and, and band at this time? Oh well, when I first started, I was definitely like a Rosalia fan. Like all of my favorite like covers and like songs were from Rosalia. Mm -hmm. But then you know, as time went by, events. Um, played i listened to more songs and then eventually um you know pasupari got me hooked into like um their band like their songs are pretty i guess fua fua and then aya is very cute so yeah my as you can see my favorite uh girl is aya from my twitter profile picture and then my twitter banner also has aya so yeah aya best girl <laughs> what, what what made you what made you draw towards Aya in particular as uh you know your, your your favorite character of course me personally I really love Aya um you know definitely one of my favorite characters as well but it's always interesting to see what other people think about you know what what makes Aya such a a, a favorite for for other people she's cute <laughs> she's cute uh, uh, anything anything else <laughs> um I've always been a sucker for like pink haired girls and like her voice is like really interesting, especially like her singing voice and like her um like I guess talking voice and like um dialogues. And then yeah, she's cute, so yeah. That's a very good criteria. That's the cost criteria right there. As long as you're cute, you become best girl. I can you can see that. Yes. <laughs> is there any um uh, do you, like in terms of like passive power as a whole, do you like uh, do you have any other opinions about the the other members uh, of Pasapare? Oh yeah, I definitely like all five of them for sure. Like I think my second one, it's a close tie between Chisato and Hina, just because like I really like Chisato's um, development as time went on. Like at first she be she was like this like uh, pessimistic, uh, I guess like person that was just doing you know her job, mm -hmm. and then as time goes on, she became she became to like like. Uh, Pastel Palace has like a whole band. And then, yeah, and then Hina is just Hina. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, she's very energetic. I, I kind of like that from her. And like, she's just, uh, how could I say this? She's just talented. And then she's bopping. So yeah, I like, I like her bopping. It's fair. It's fair. Good, good. So, um, cause obviously, um, 
your love for many of the the characters, in particular, uh, past the palettes and and you know specific characters in past the palettes, uh, kind of convinced you to go into to, to tiering. So before I, we talk a little bit more about your your tiering experience, what was your introduction to, to tiering? How did you first get into it? Um. Well, so back in twenty nineteen, I was still like you know a fresh newbie coming from uh, I guess Reddit. Mm-hmm. So I would always browse reddit and then i just decided to join the discord one day and then it was just like a couple of weeks um uh everyone just started saying like nbn in the chat and i'm like oh what's nbn and then like all of a sudden you know uh nbn's owner swift came in and and then yeah i was just interested so i messaged him asking if i could join and then i joined and then there was like you know a lot of people that were like you know known in the team server so then i just you know asked around and then, yeah, I just joined the tiering server, and then I just kept on joining and joining. And then I guess that kick-started my tiering community. Um, yeah. Okay. So uh, obviously when you mentioned, like, the Discord server at the start, that's, that's Popcorn, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, so what, what, uh, what was your, like, your first, like, event in a, a tiering server, and how was that like? Um, my first like actual like participant like when I actually like filled was mm-hmm. during um Summer Celia, uh, pretty much yeah Summer Celia. Mm-hmm. And then I was just talking more often, and then you know chatting because I think all of T ten was actually in NBN at the time, mm-hmm. like active members. So yeah, I just decided to, like help out. Okay, okay, and of course, as time went by, you started to collect some. Some some whale thoughts we would say right to to say mm. you, know, you know maybe I I want to get a a, a top ten title or, or even a, a podium title right. Mm. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let me let me get the order straight. Was the um was the was your T three your first technically your first like big achievement or was it the um one of the other T tens. I would say my big achievement is probably my first T10 because that's when like I got to like actually experience like the whole like you know tiering routine and yeah it just opened my eyes to how like difficult it would be at the time like I would I underestimated um tiers at the time I thought well you, you literally just tap tap for like a long time and then you know when you actually experience it you're like dang this is actually hard mm-hmm. so was that the whitest day or uh, was that the first event then or was it the, yes. the oh, okay the whiteness day okay um yes. so obviously that was a um you know uh, a pretty pretty uh, difficult uh, event. I mean, you know getting t10 for the first time that's obviously uh, quite quite difficult um but but uh what did you in terms of like i guess because this was like your first experience what what did you learn um from that experience in order to sort of carry over to to help you with uh eventually your your t3 and then of course um the back-to-back uh t10s after well first of all you should really not like be working and doing school at the same time when you're like i know it's like doable but for sure i wouldn't recommend having like a t10 during school and like work at the same time Mm -hmm. and then obviously um learning your body's limit at the time at the time, mine was like 12 hours. Like, I really like struggled during the eight hour mark. And then, mm. yeah, I only played for like 12 hours back then, but I also ma- I still managed to keep like a consistent schedule. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, obviously, again, pacing is, uh, is quite, uh, quite important in terms of trying to make sure you figure out, you learn yourself and know what your limits are. And I'm sure that, you know, we'll talk a little bit more about. Um, you know, pacing and, and, and timing and all that when we talk about your, your other events. But um, so, so would, would that, would, would you still consider the, the widest day T10 to be your, your hardest T10 or was, was any of the other ones more difficult? Um, my, for T10s, I would say probably ReZero would be my most difficult. Mm-hmm. Just because, um, yeah, I was originally going for Podium. But then I did a, a a huge mistake and slept for twelve hours. Well, more like I knocked out for twelve hours, mm-hmm. and then it just really like backset like my whole progress. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, to this day, I still regret knocking out when I could have just had the willpower to get up. 
Yeah, it, it's difficult, right? Again, um, tiering is definitely not easy, especially in your case, cause where you know you were you were kind of whale influenced by a particular someone to tier literally the event before. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder yes, who. Yes, yes. I wonder who. Cuffs, I wonder right? Who? who? Well, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was um obviously I, I imagine that re zero like it's being a very difficult. Um, event because it was just so competitive. There's so there was like competing servers. Um, in general, a lot of people were were, were playing in it, and it was quite uh, uh, quite quite challenging overall. But yes, um, yes. yeah, like was there a, a a big takeaway you learned from um tiering that event, or like was there like a very uh, memorable moment of uh tiering in in Rezero, despite the you know the uh, the back set that you had or the, the challenges and the obstacles you faced? Uh, I could just say challenge live as an event is horrible and I will never do it again unless it's a pretty title. And, uh, you know, just, just to enlighten our, our viewers, um, for those who maybe are unfamiliar, what, what makes challenge lives difficult for you? What, 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 why are challenge lives, you know, maybe a, a, a live that uh, people don't like to tear as much? Well, first of all, you have to have two teams. One is your multi-live team, and then the other is your, I guess you could say your own personal team, like your versus live team, but in a, mm -hmm. like, in a challenge live. So the main part that's hard is just um, knowing, I guess it's just mostly like knowing when you spend your uh, challenge points, because, um, and also knowing um, how much you'll get per game. And like, you pretty much have to calculate that and then find a time that's like, suitable for you to burn those points because you know you don't really want to burn it when there's like you know active rooms but at the same time you don't also want to like not burn it because it is an important part of challenge life it, like it literally says challenge life in the <laughs> um event so yeah it's just m pretty much managing your multi-life and then your challenge life at the same time and it could be hard especially I really got lucky during Re Zero because Stay Alive is a twenty three, and I was easily like able to do it, and I was also pretty fast as well. So it was a really effective um, song, even when you're like really tired. Yeah, that was one thing that I noticed about Re Zero because again, the the one thing that's really interesting about that particular event because you had the option of going the super hard path of Paradise's Paradoxum, which was technically more efficient and gave you more points but the song was way more difficult um mm -hmm. you know and obviously if you don't play it well you you, you end up losing points in, in the process whereas stay alive is a a little bit longer just a very slightly longer song it doesn't give you as much mm -hmm. points but it's you know still very time efficient and um i know some people when i spoke with them they found stay alive was actually low key a little bit more difficult of a challenge live song to play because it was so resident sleeper <laughs> that they would like <laughs> they just couldn't pay attention they couldn't focus um after tearing for so long and they just tried to play stay alive and um as the title mentions stay uh, alive it, it's uh pretty difficult to stay alive <laughs> 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 um yeah so but yeah overall cost again although like you know maybe there was a bit of an off offset in that um in your plan earlier but again back-to-back -to -back top 10s in general is is not uh is not easy so i i still think you did a very good job especially when you know y you had initial plans and it just kind of uh, a, a T3 ended up becoming two back-to-back -back, uh, T10s, which I think it's still like pretty, uh, pretty good overall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit more about your T3 though, because that's obviously a big accomplishment. Getting third place, a podium title in um, how to sp spend a special day, or I think that's what it's called. Um, what um, what what convinced you to to go for that particular event and podium that event? Well, it all started in NBN when I think T, uh, T1's runner Cookies was announcing like um, his roster. So I actually don't remember what happened. All I know is that I joined his T10. And then I believe IPN messaged me asking if I wanted to T3 because he was just going to drop his T3 to go to a T10. So then, you know, obviously I was like, huh, my first podium attempt. I'll just try it. And then, yeah, this happened from there. It just happened. Uh, was that... So obviously you mentioned Re Zero was one of the most difficult ones. Was was that T three still challenging in its own way? 
Um, honestly, I wouldn't say it was challenging just because we uh, there was only one server. Uh, the uh pubcord um peers were just going for T10, mm -hmm. and then yeah, everyone was just um really nice on the roster. You know, it was just really um it wasn't as difficult, but for my uh personal case, I actually had trouble with it. Due to the fact that um, I believe like nine hours before the event started, I had to get my wisdom teeth surgery. Oh, and it was all four. Oh and then, man. Yeah, and and I didn't. I don't believe I got any sleep as well, so I had to like pretty much start tearing with like a bloody mouth. You know, I would taste iron. Like I, I don't. I don't I hope that's not graphical, but I would just taste. <laughs> iron. I would just taste iron like literally like every like ten seconds, and then it was not the most you know enjoyable starting but you know it just happened and then i would say i i did not have like the right stamina i guess mm. for like a t3 runner i think i went like 12 hours on my first um day and then like i think t2 and t1 they went like 30 hours respectively mm. so you know it's a pretty big gap like a uh i can't do math 28 hours different wait i can't do math no 18, 18 hours hour, 18 hours yeah <laughs> yeah uh yeah it was just not fun tearing with a bloody mouth well you, you you made it out in the end though um how much how much uh sleep did you think you end up getting during that uh that uh event like how like maybe like uh, or a different question is how 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 long on average or how many hours on average did you spend every day to to get that t3 Mm, I want to say it's been a while. I definitely had like a good amount of sleep, so it wasn't as like challenging. Mm -hmm. I would say I want around like eight to twelve hours per day, and then at like the end, since it wasn't busy, um, you know, it's just like you know four to six hours. Mm -hmm. no. no, that's fair. That's fair. I think that's a pretty reasonable like uh, sleep schedule for a, a top three. Like obviously now events are getting more and more competitive, so it's mm -hmm. um, I think it's getting a bit more difficult to to afford that sort of uh, sleep schedule. But oh, yeah. it's good, again, the cost that you're able to to showcase and fight through more um, sort of uh, obstacles and, and persevere through that <laughs> that incident of, of maybe uh, yeah. getting, like, fevers and uh, all that fun stuff with wisdom teeth being pulled out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, obviously, I think we, we've talked quite a bit about your, you know, the events that you consider to be difficult and also the challenges that you faced but um was there a particular event that you found that was let's say enjoyable or, or fun um i think i know the answer to that but uh... yes you, i believe you do it was uh <laughs> it was a pretty even though I, I as well like i would okay if anyone would know it's uh you know devoted towards my dream or I still remember it as like the original, like straight, uh, straight towards, towards your dream. dream? Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I really I like STYD instead of DTMD, but DTMD is easier to say. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'll just say DTMD. So devotedly towards your dream is probably the most fun I've had, even though my original objective was uh, also like a T three. But then, um, uh, I guess it was just um, the fact that knowing I was gonna also attempting another podium during Re Zero, mm -hmm. I kind of just you know. Especially when I was a competing server, I kind of just was like, okay, I'm just gonna, just gonna give up my T3 so that it won't be as bloody, because you know there was um there was Evergreen going for it, uh, Sprite going for it, Skitter going for it, and then I believe Emmy also going mm -hmm. for like podium. So it was just a four way battle. Mm -hmm. So then yeah, and then you know T10 also had this issue. I I kind of fucked up by not um playing as much when i was supposed to building you know biggest mistake is to not build a lead when you have the chance or else you know uh you'll get sniped which happened to me and then i just ended up getting one of our members boated towards the end which i to this day still regret um not seeing it happen mm -hmm. yeah it, 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 just... it was difficult it was an 11 day 11 day event very difficult to pace yourself in that. It's really difficult to mm -hmm. to foresee all that. Yeah, but you know, as you know, as I said, even with the downside, it was still the most fun that I had. Just because, like, you know, the roster was really like cool. The mods were, you know, amazing. And <laughs> I want to say your memes were really like motivated. 
<laughs> like during the event, it was just like I would just be, you know, tapping, and then all of a sudden I see a meme, and then I'm like, oh, is it a film meme? And then of course it was, and then you know, I was I would start dying, and then I would break my combo. Sometimes I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, uh, uh, that, that 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 was definitely a, a really fun time because, like, I I think what what really made DTMD such a great event was just the like the storyline around it. Obviously, competition sucks, and you have to compete against other people, but it, it adds a little bit of like storylines to the the whole like plot, especially when it's eleven days. Well, I was, at some point, we're all gonna go insane, and then we have to find ways to to cope with <laughs> oh yeah uh, with the eleven days of tearing, and obviously. Uh, memes do, do do quite well, but uh, yeah, it was it was honestly a, a cause. I do agree, it was one of the most fun events we had. Obviously, there were some um, again, <laughs> again, some some unfortunate circumstances that happened um, in yes, terms yes. of like you know our our roster or one of our roster members getting voted. Uh, but hopefully, Mint, you'll uh, get it next time. You'll get it soon. Mm -hmm. You'll get that T ten soon. But uh, you know, again, that I think overall. When, when when I think about DTMD, like just seeing like the 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 comeback factor and the oh like, yeah, the, that was the, the, huge. The storyline switching. We thought we, I honestly thought we were done, but um, mm -hmm. just seeing that switch and and how that happened, it was it was actually honestly incredible. So um, it's it's great that you you kind of shared the same sentiment that uh, that was definitely the most uh, one of the most fun events uh, we we've tiered um, mm -hmm. in in there. So yeah, it was. It was good. It was yeah. Fun. Painful but fun. <laughs> not 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 a masochist kind of, you know, pain. Yeah, yeah. Because again, <laughs> ultimately you're doing this for your devotion, in your case, of course, towards uh past the palettes. Um specifically yes, yes. again, this Aya card is a it is the focus um focus banner. So, you know, obviously you gotta do it for her. Mm -hmm. And the title. Pretty title. For sure, for sure. Um before we go to a quick break, Koss, I just want to ask as my final question. Uh, obviously, because you are not a whale, right? Obviously, mm, because you're not a whale. Yes. How, how mm -hmm. much uh, resources did you end up using uh, for for those two? Uh, well, I, I guess the back-to-back mm. -back T10, I think, is the most uh, most uh, interesting. Uh, mm. I mean, do, you want, do you mind sharing? Or, or uh, mm. is it going to be a, a no comment again? Hmm. I want to say you read my mind, um, you know. Mm. <laughs> hmm. I I just want to give a shout out to my um, my uh, funds during special day to uh, devotedly. It saved me uh, about a hundred and twenty five k stars. You know, I, you know, you may be asking how did I get that much? You know, you just you know get top one uh, k every event, and then you know, yeah, no yeah, comment. You, you know, there's a <laughs> there's like other things, right? Like. Uh um mm -hmm. other other ways of getting stars right <laughs> other mm -hmm. uh, other shadier methods mm -hmm. yes yes watching <laughs> ads yes yes <laughs> no but well, yeah again um you know again uh costs again i think that again the back-to-back -back top 10 is something that um not a lot of people do um even though it was it could have been a back-to-back -back podium um, but back to back top ten is still very very uh, very good. So it's great that uh, you were able to to achieve something that not many players out there were able to achieve. And obviously, I think the uh, um, those were probably some really painful twenty days of <laughs> of your life. But uh, uh, mm. it was, I think it was very worth it. I think uh, you know to get that yes. title for Rezero and for uh, Pasupare. I think you, you mentioned that you were seeing like what was it like four D five D like banders. <laughs> I guess VR Bandori is the good term because, you know, 20, playing the game 24 hours, not getting sleep, and, um, you know, being on caffeine makes you start seeing stuff that you normally don't see. For example, um, I was just looking at my desk, and then all of, a, all of a sudden, I just started seeing A to Z out of nowhere, and I'm like, uh, yeah. And then, you know, I looked at the wall, I started seeing the whole lane and like the notes and you know <laughs> it, it does things to you that um yeah if you're if you tear for like 24 hours or like more you start to see things you start to see some see some some interesting things <laughs> yes 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 well all right well uh we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about uh you know your your other like tiering and, and future plans in a bit but we'll take a quick break in this uh episode uh refill 
uh, in one minute, and we will continue to set very shortly. The Refill Studio is brought to you by the Unga Discord server. Feel free to join us. Links are in the description below. And you'll be able to join our community who's passionate about Bang Dream and hearing um, in the game. And you'll also get the chance to meet with some of our special guests featured in this podcast series. Uh, it's a great time, fun place to host events. And we hope to see you there. The Refill Studio will be back very shortly. All right, welcome back. Uh, the set, it will continue. Uh, we will refill back. And let us continue this episode. Uh, again, special guest, Koss, joining me um, in this episode of the Refill Studio. We've talked a little bit more about how he got into Bandori, as well as his overall experience tiering um, in the um, in the events that he did to get uh, three top ten titles and one top three title. Now... Cause of course, um, I'm sure that um, getting uh, you know a couple of top tens or a uh, top three, uh, I'm not sure if you're you're happy enough with that, especially with how we've been talking about like you know about uh, some of the um, uh, the event the initial plans you had. Uh, so maybe you're not fully satisfied uh, with your accomplishments right now. So so can you share how what you plan to possibly um do in the future in terms of like future events that you want to to aim for um is there anything of that sort well first of all i was planning on aiming for a top one actually this november but due to some um uh, circumstances like uh wanting to focus on school more and getting a potential card that i might be you know spending around like you know thirty thousand for like six years you know mm -hmm. uh you know it just I you know, just didn't feel like putting in that much, especially when there's like another competing server. I don't really want to like blow that much money. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, and then uh, December happens. You know, happens to be you know Christmas, and also you know November there's Black Friday deals, and then I have you know I want to prioritize my like IRL situation more than just you know getting a title that I might not even like be satisfied with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah it's just i want to prioritize my real life situation over getting a title um anything like anything next year that you might plan maybe like another t10 or um or anything more or is that still something that you're you're working on right now also, um, next year, I believe it's the next spring Pasu Power event. Mm -hmm. I will be going for T1 during it. And then I believe I will be going for another back-to-back -back podium. The uh, first one will be the Hagumi Dinosaur event. I plan on getting, at the moment, it's, I'm not sure if it's T2 or T3. Mm -hmm. But then after that, it's going to be the Pasu Power collab with uh, Zombieland Saga. And I attend to aim for a top one during the event. Wow, that's gonna be uh, that's gonna be quite an adventure, you know, back to back top tens, and then it's now gonna be back to back podiums, possibly T two into T one. That's a that's a pretty big Rilla move, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, but I hope my wallet can handle it. Uh, oh I mean, wow, well, wallet, I mean... <laughs> wallet, wallet! Uh, no. Wait, wait! I thought you weren't a whale. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, let's just say, let's just say, um, I will start activating my funds for next year. No, <laughs> I I am still free to play. JD free to play this year, but <laughs> hopefully by next year I will um be satisfied with my accomplishments. Yeah, for yeah. sure, for sure. It's it's really good to to be also because again for for a lot of people, uh, when they're trying to plan out a particular event, um, and we're gonna talk about this as well, but like you know when you're planning out events and such and, what, and planning on exactly when where you want to tier, like it's a, it's a definitely a mix of you know it's an event that you really feel special and attached to and something that you really want to go for and just persevere and, and go for it but also you know it's balancing all other things that you have uh, in, in life as well right because as you can see um there's not like you know the same person tearing this like every single event getting like top 10 or top three uh, obviously that's just way too much and not really worth it but um finding hmm. that right balance <laughs> hmm. finding, I, I don't know but just finding that right balance i think it's important to, to balance life and, and tearing and making sure that it all like kind of uh, kind of works out. 
Yeah, for sure. Because, you know, unfortunately, I do have a life outside of Bandori. So I can't really, like, you know, spend like a month just tearing. Mm -hmm. okay. And then, you know, I I got to get my, you know, money for my, my potential car. And then, like, I want to save up money for my debt I might have in the future. And then, yeah, pretty much just money. So the balance of being a balance of being a productive member of society and also just uh, uh, tearing in, in general in, in, in Bandari. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Carlos, you know, obviously this could have taken a lot of preparation or, and such. Like what would be, when it comes to like looking at upcoming events and, and just seeing like, you know, an upcoming event, what, what was sort of your main criteria in terms of like, say, this is the event that I want to tear for. Um, I know for, for a lot of people, um, the criteria may be a little bit more more black and white, but I don't know about you. Like, do you have a particular criteria? Uh, for instance, when it came to you choosing uh, Sakura Stroll or or, or the ha the Hagami event, the the Happy Dinosaur. Like, was there any so, so, sort of thing that you followed that you that told you that like you know I want to go for this event and I'm going to tear for this event. So, in terms of um, my Sakura Stroll, for sure. It just varies. So when you're going for a T1, you know, you obviously have to like set up and a server, you know, find people that are willing to, you know, support you, finding mods, you know, making the channels, like sending out bots. Uh, pretty much when you go for T1 and you want support, it's definitely more work for um, yourself. So that in terms shows that, you know, you're actually willing to like put in the effort to go for a T1. So when it for me, when in terms of T1, I gotta pretty much you know have a year's worth of plan, and I have to make sure like right off the bat that I won't be like, oh, I'm gonna drop this like in a month. So pretty much, just in T1 in general for my criteria, I have to like, I don't really have a criteria. It's just more like, do I like this band? Am I willing to put in like you know the money and effort during this time? And then will, will I even be having, you know, actual time to tier? Because, you know, tiering, as you can see, it's going to be like, it's like a full-time commitment for a week. So for that, I got to make sure, you know, as I mentioned before, I am a pretty huge sucker for, you know, pastel palettes. So for me personally, my first criteria is if it's, you know, a party a uh, event. And usually you can see that with uh, uh, Bandori's JP Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, they usually have like a preview of like the like the image and then like the title. So for me, I looked at the image. You know, it was Hina with like you know uh, Sakura blossom trees in the background, and then the title was pink. So you know, obviously for me, that's the first criteria that um that I checked. And then the second one, for many people, it's just having like the right team and attributes. But for me, I just I don't I don't really care. I have like a years to uh, prepare so yeah, usually people are usually people just wait till like the members and the attributes to see if they really want it. But as of right now the current EN meta, I would say EN meta is the moment the event is announced, if you like the title and if you like the girl on the preview, you just make this server right away. And then worry about it later. <laughs> yeah, worry about it later pretty much, you know. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, that's pretty much a T1, but for like, you know, if someone else made a server, there's a, there's a criteria I want to see. So usually, well, not really a criteria, it's more like if I'm like more like decisive to um, tier, it's just the roster, you know. So for uh, Hagumi, uh, Dinosaur Hagumi, pretty much the reason why I even mentioned like, you know, podiums, because uh, a uh, fellow uh, Hagumi, well, not, not Hagumi, more like a uh, Hello Happy uh, fan, if you know him, Care Blair decided to um, uh, podium it. And then he was like, yo, you should podium with me. And I'm like, uh, sure. <laughs> and then, yeah. And then I was, you know, I was just, I was like thinking, do I really want to podium this event? And then I just see the roster, and then, you know, it's R2 again, as you can see, T1 softball, how oh, happy softball. And then, you know, T10s are the people I know, and, like, you know, I genuinely enjoy talking to them and hanging out with them. Pretty much Hive. Mm -hmm. So then, yeah, that's pretty much what I what went through my mindset when it comes to, like, um, T2 and T3, or, like, even T10 itself. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, it also shows that you get whale fluence a little bit, uh, quite often, I think. <laughs> Mm, 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 that's mm, a little bit of mm, <laughs> a fun danger of in, in the tier community once you get into mm, the tier community especially you start getting involved with like the the higher ranks um you do get whale fluids quite quite often i <laughs> i might have got uh whale fluids myself on my on the mm, recent uh my recent uh t5 but, you know by the way i'm not a whale but uh you know by the way <laughs> free to play by the way free to play FTP. by the way Free to play, free to play. Free to play. Mm-hmm. I fell free to play, remember? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Klaus, what do you, what do you, like, one other thing about, like, planning. What, what do you think about the change to, um, to EN events? The fact that now it is shorter overall and that events such as, let's say, your, your soccer stroll and, um, the zombie land saga, those events are coming out earlier. What did, what, what do you think about the, the change? So I feel like there's two sides to this. There's a side that will get screwed over just because, you know, if they have like actual commitments in real life, like let's say a job and like it's something that they have to like request off, you know, obviously it's going to be difficult now because you don't really have a, you know, a set time and day just because it's no longer going to be like a year ahead. So now that um, it's no longer going to be like, you know, a year ahead, it's going to be rough to estimate like, around what time the event's going to be. And it's also going to be rough to, like, ask for time off. So, you know, some people may not be able to, like, ask for time off during um, these situations, even though, like, let's say they really, like, want to tier it. They just don't have the time or, like, the um, commitment because, you know, I would honestly say, like, real-life situations are more important than mandatory. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. What's the other side of the coin? You said there are two sides. Uh, what's the other side of the coin in terms of maybe like a positive for this change, in your opinion? Um, definitely. Like you know, I'd say like the casual players. They have like, they have you know. Actually, yeah, I feel like the casual players have um more leeway just because you know when it comes to shorter events, that means you know events uh, are getting done earlier, so that means more stars for them to build up you know more events to like play and see and then you know pretty much more storyline so there's like a positive and also if the people that are whales you know have less time commitment then you know obviously it's going to be easier for them to you know have like days off Hmm. yeah yeah have you ever thought of the fact that maybe like let's say for instance like your t1 or or your podiums they might be like five day events or six day events and how that could like affect you know your like um your 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 tiering because obviously compared to an 11 day event which is a you know marathon and something you have done before um do you think you'll be looking forward to possibly like condensing it down to like five or six days and and such like do do you like is that something that uh you think you'll be you'll be ready for so in that situation i wouldn't really say it's a marathon but more like a sprint now because nowadays um uh usually when you're like doing podium the pretty much the unwritten rule is to play as much as possible so with longer events you were, were able to pace yourself more and you know you would have more time to pretty much play each time but now that the events are getting shorter, it actually makes it so that the the person with like a more sprint capability, like you know, more stamina early on and like getting less sleep would win events more. So it's pretty much like a huge shift from you know pacing yourself to going as long as you can as without much sleep. Do you consider yourself to be a marathoner or a sprinter? Um, you know, I want to say I'm more of a sprinter, but I don't really, I haven't really, you know, pushed my body to its uh, utmost limit, Mm -hmm. but I want to see what I can do during the next, I guess, few, I don't know. To be honest, I just know that uh, what my body can handle each day, but I haven't really, you know, put my body onto like uh, under stress for like more than one day pretty much so that's gonna be something i will have to discover the hard way when i start tearing but i'm pretty confident to uh you know find these out and hopefully not screw myself over like past (laughs) mistakes 
Yeah, for sure. Honestly, Cos, I'm wishing you all the best. Of course, I will, of course, be in your, you know, server system support and, and give you all the uh, support you need for, for fills. And, of course, if anyone in the uh, viewers out there who are also watching this uh, episode and want to join, um, you know, Cos's servers and help him out in his upcoming events next year, uh, feel free to join the Anga Academy um and my discord server again links are in the description all of our special guests on the refill studio can be um contacted there you could also just uh, send cost a private message and he'll be very happy to to get the support you need and of course um, his twitter handle is also on uh, the podcast as well so feel free uh to contact him there as well and i'm sure uh, he would greatly appreciate your support yes 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 any support <laughs> would be appreciated whether it be you know talking and chat um or you know like filling as well yeah or or memes sometimes as or well <laughs> <laughs> uh i think i do have hold on uh oh i do have memes oh it's more like shit post but <laughs> i'll take that as a meme yep that's yes. fair that's fair <laughs> yes yes any memes are uh, as long as you know they're safe for work obviously yeah of course. You know. of course of course but yes yes well speaking of memes uh cause i, I want to talk about hmm. one last thing before we-, we we end off today and obviously you are well known quite well known in the community for um introducing mm. this one particular play style of, of, of bang dream and, and we call this mm. um we call this shower dory now <laughs> now now what 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 exactly is shower dory well to start that we have to go back to the or well there's no really origins but, but like the original like concept that i figured out was during special day so you know obviously um a fellow runner, you know, he is well known in the Popipa community, uh, IPN. Uh, one day was saying that he was gonna play Bandori in the shower. So I'm like, hmm, hmm. Not that much people actually, you know, do that. So I decided to try it out for the first time. <laughs> and as a fellow, you know, I, uh, phone player and thumb user, I would say that Shower Dory is a complete meta strategy. <laughs> I would say it is very efficient, especially, you know, if you're a thumb player and, you know, if it's on like a small device. So, yeah, back to that, you know, I, you know, I really enjoyed Shower Door. It was like really, you know, relaxing, even though, you know, tearing can be stressful. It was just, you know, a time to be relaxed and it woke you up, depending if you're using, you know, hot or cold water. So then I'm like, huh, why do the people not do this that much? So then, you know, I just, I just started, you know, saying I was going to Shower Door every like, uh event and then yeah it just happened to catch on with many people and then i honestly just did the shower dory guide as an actual joke but <laughs> i don't know if it's like an actual guide i just originally <laughs> did it as like a meme like <laughs> I, like it, it does have some like good advice like i want to say good advice but i i'm not really <laughs> I'm not really someone to give good advice. Oh no! But you know, you know, uh, you know, give or take. It, it was originally meant to be a meme, but you know, if people want to use that guy, I I am more than welcome, more than happy to you know let people use that guy. But you know, just just know it was originally meant to be a meme. So, <laughs> uh, so so obviously I, I I read the guide uh, after you you know obviously we. we... It was very highly requested. Of like, what exactly highly is going? <laughs> highly requested. Highly requested. <laughs> you know, one thing I that always confused me was just like, okay, how are you supposed to, you know, play while there's like water, or you know, you know there's water everywhere, and like you're you're showering at the same time. But then your guy talked about like how you would like you know put on put on shampoo and then yes. like play menu on the other hand and then other stuff. It was it was it was quite complex um and honestly just looking at that guide i was like i don't think this is something i'm going to do (laughs) (laughs) well you know obviously you know in most situations when you're tearing you really don't have to put on you know conditioner shampoo just because you know you're gonna it, it might just be more harmful than beneficial but i like to you know not be stinky and you know i like to go out with like you know a good shower so despite all of that I was actually like I actually managed to like you know do that pretty much most of the time. It's it just requires like people to you know be fast, 
when you're in the shower and like obviously you gotta dry, you gotta make sure you don't wet your like your fingers or else if you do you gotta like dry them instantly because um you don't want it to have like you know obviously you don't want water in your screen or else it will like mess up your tapping but at the same time you don't want it to dry it out so that you would still have like you would have like friction you would like have no friction because it can be hard to like you know slide so you know it's <laughs> i wouldn't say it's really complex all you got to do is just not wet your hands or like dry them instantly but you know it's very situational just because you would need your you know you would obviously need your like a small device first of all because uh if you have a large device that can be you know harder to like you know shower and like even hold it with one hand mm -hmm. and then at the same time your shower would have to like if you do play with index your shower would have to have like a flat surface but even then that can be hard just because the water can get on like you know the flat surface and then yeah i just oh my god who's calling me oh <laughs> <laughs> well uh you know don't don't mind that quick but yeah it can it can just be like it can be very beneficial depending on you know which type of player you are and you know what device you have but you know i i wouldn't recommend people doing it if they have like a big device and they're playing with index yeah again uh it's it's it, you, you, you for our viewers you could definitely see that the the bandari tiering community in particular have very fascinating ways in terms of trying to make things as efficient as possible efficiency is key uh whether or not you uh you know you even play while showering or playing while using the toilet that was sort of like the the i guess that's sort of like the the beginner level the, the advanced level is is taking the step up to to, to shower dory but uh, you know that it, it's really uh really strange but also um quite intriguing of how uh we found so many uh, unique ways to to uh, <laughs> <laughs> to stay efficient while uh while tearing but i do agree with your um i do agree with your notion you got to stay fresh while you're tearing and, and sometimes that shower is uh is necessary you don't want to be stimky mm -hmm. uh when, when you're when you're tearing <laughs> yes it can also like wake you up like pretty much like if you're like let's say you're like really tired and then you go in the shower depending on like uh, if it's like hot or cold, you'll pretty much wake up instantly. But you know, water bills. You know, you, you don't want to spend that t much time in the water. For sure. So most people just use a, like a bucket of like ice water, and then they just like dump their uh, face in there to wake up. So that's another that's another strat um, people do, and I will be trying that out next year because I see people who do it have been saying that it's very effective. Okay. All right. Well, that's going to be something that, you, again, as you mentioned, a lot of trial and error when it comes to uh, your your first T1. Uh, I think this one, your first T1 early, early next year will be a very good testament on, you know, the limits of how you're going to uh, push through for your back-to-back your -back podiums after. So um, mm -hmm. that's going to be uh, quite interesting there. Um, hot, hot shower or cold shower? Uh, just the last question on this. <laughs> Um, you know, I uh, I really like cold showers just because, like, I really don't like the heat. Ah. Like, um, I I feel like I'm more like comfortable in like cold like environment, like not freezing cold, but like just like like cool environments. Mm -hmm. So for me, I would say cold showers, and plus it can wake you up as it can pretty much wake up your like your tiredness. That's fair. That's fair. All right. Oh, yeah. Well, um, cost the uh the shower dory. <laughs> um sensei and of course uh you know your your uh wellness and, and such and some of your mm. uh your tearing mm. experiences um mm. not a whale by the way hashtag free to play uh, <laughs> <laughs> well the cost thank you thank you so much for for taking the time to uh uh join us for the the refill studio today are there any last uh, uh shout outs you want to give or any last words you want to give to our viewers uh my last words um you know hi i'm coast or cost you know whatever it's say and uh i do coast cost stuff um as you can see a lot of people in the bandwork community will do anything possible to be efficient and like you know you know pretty much play bandwork so we're not weird but we are in the minority so uh, to all of the people out here watching or like eventually going to view um i don't know what to say <laughs> Uh, uh, you know, if you if you're interested, you can join the Bandora community. We're very friendly to new people. 
Um, just got to make sure you read the rules, you know, all of the announcements. As, as I said before, um, the tiering committee, I mean, not tiering committee, but the tiering servers can be a lot of work to do. And because of that, people are going to be more likely to, you know, be more stressed out when, um, you know, you're not doing your proper job as like, if, if you are planning on supporting and like filling. So just make sure, you know, you're more of a benefit to the server. So, you know, just read the rules, read the announcement, read the efficiency guide, make sure um, you're being a positive member. And yeah, pretty much it. And uh, we do look forward to, to having you, especially cost, especially to, uh, um, you know, to his servers to support him in the future and maybe get some uh, people to follow his uh, follow his antics of uh, of shower door, I guess. <laughs> mm, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> well, Koss, again, thank you so much for um, joining this episode today. And again, uh, the set has been complete for this episode of the Refill Studio. Once more, um, all of our special guests, um, including Koss, are featured in the Unga Academy. So feel free to join um the discord if you would like to keep in touch with our uh special guests and otherwise uh thank you all so much for listening um this is your host sb philos for and uh you know um we look forward to seeing you in the next set um and see you at refill once more um have a good rest of your time thanks for watching and of course Stan, Aya, and Pasapare. <laughs> stay hydrated. And stay hydrated. That's stay true. hydrated. That's true. That's true. All right. Aya Take hydrated. care. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.